Uh, the NDAA that the president promised he wouldn't sign, and then it wouldn't conveniently sign. So Dan has organized 70 chapters in 30 states of grassroots groups to fight the NDAA at every level of government. So I want to, is Dan ready? You here, Dan? Here he is, Dan Johnson. How y'all doing, Paul Fest? Come on, this is the Liberty Revolution. How y'all doing, Paul Fest? So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this event they put on for us. As Stuart Rhodes once told me, when you organize an event like this, you put your life on hold. So let's give a big round of applause for everybody who made this event happen. No man can make it to any position without some serious help. There are many people who have helped me along the way and lent their expertise to me that I want to thank. First of all, I'd like to thank the Ohio Oath Keepers for getting us the funding to start in our tax. Then, the Young Americans for Liberty in Ohio for keeping Panda afloat during the early days. I'd also like to thank Stuart Rhodes and the Intolerable Acts Committee for guiding us along the way. But most of all, I'd like to thank Bowling Green, Ohio Mayor Richard Edwards for telling me I should have taken Government 160, didn't know anything about the inner workings of national government. You put a fire under my belt to help bring a real, peaceful revolution to this nation. When FBI Director Mueller was asked, referring to drone strikes, about killing American citizens on U.S. soil, he answered, I'll check on that. He chronicled an ever-increasing problem in this nation, the use of the military on American soil. The NDAA, or National Defense Authorization Act, passed every year by Congress, usually just funds the military. This year, however, the NDAA authorizes the military to go into your homes, take you away, never to see your family again, never to get a trial, a lawyer, or even due process. So in the short time I have to talk to you, I would like to go through how the NDAA is a danger, how it applies to American citizens, what it does to our Constitution, why we must win this fight here, and what you can do to fight it and restore one of the missions of the revolution, to bring liberty and constitutional rights back to our nation. You see, many will say that the NDAA merely codifies existing law. It does not. It targets you. The AUMF, or Authorization for Use of Military Force, only had targets of those who participated in the 9-11 attacks. The NDAA changes that. The AUMF is how our justice system is supposed to work. It's retroactive. You must first commit the crime, then be proven guilty of the crime, before you are punished for it. The 2012 NDAA, however, introduces pre-crime. How many of you have seen the Minority Report with Tom Cruise? Absolutely excellent movie. I highly recommend it. It outlines a government strategy to read a person's thoughts to tell if they're going to, mit to commit a crime. It also follows the new targets in the 2012 NDAA. This bill follows the dangerous trend of trying to stop someone before they commit a crime, and that power can be easily abused. If I say to you, you were gonna steal my TV, you're going to jail, and immediately throw you in prison, do you have to have stolen that TV? No, but you're still sitting in jail. And let's say you don't get a trial. You're charged with being a thief, a burglar, and a criminal, and you can't contest that ruling. The NDAA allows the government to arrest you, charge you with nothing, and not give you a trial. But does it apply to American citizens? Yes. Let's ask Senator Lindsey Graham, who was on the House floor screaming, shut up, you don't get a lawyer. 
even if you're an American citizen on U.S. soil, you don't have to be read your rights. You can be held indefinitely and even tortured. According to the Senator, if you even think about terrorism, you will face three things. Death, detention, prosecution. Of course, there is that sentence in the NDAA which states, the requirement detained does not extend to American citizens. However, that's a useless piece of doublespeak, like most of the stuff that comes out of Congress these days. If I give you a raw chicken, and I say, I want that chicken back tomorrow, and the requirement to cook it does not extend to you, you might get bored that day, and I might get a chicken back cooked, breaded, buttered, and served with a full meal. However, if the next day I give you another raw chicken and say, you are prohibited from cooking that chicken, I better get that chicken back raw. That's the issue with the language in this section. Even though they remove the requirement, there's still an option to detain. And when you give the government power, it'll take it. Now, the NDAA violates almost our entire constitution. Freedom of association, free speech, unlawful search and seizure, you name it. But the most dangerous part of the NDAA is hidden in the requirement to detain. That requirement reads as follows. The armed forces of the United States shall hold a person in military custody pending disposition under the law of war. The worst part of this is not that the American military are policing, are allowed to police our streets. The worst part is not even that you can be held in a military prison camp. The worst part is that your fate can be decided under the law of war. In truth, it doesn't matter how many provisions of the Constitution are directly violated by the NDAA. Our Congress has taken the law of war and superimposed it on top of the Constitution. There are no free speech rights in the law of war. There are no Second Amendment rights in the law of war. There are no constitutional rights in the law of war. They have taken the Constitution, the supreme law of the land, and replaced it with the law of war. Congress has declared America a battlefield, us as the enemy, and every single congressman that voted for the NDAA, along with our president, should be tried for treason. Now I'll get the Secret Service following me. There will be those that say, this can't affect me, this can't affect me, it can't happen here, when they forget about Stalin's Soviet Russia and the secret police, the NKVD, which had a quota of people to detain off the street. They would detain people randomly because they had a quota to meet, much like many police officers with speeding tickets in America. They also forget that a regiment of soldiers in Georgia has been tasked with controlling civil disturbances in the United States. Remember, a quota of people to detain. Think about that. There will be those that then say, that was Russia, this is America, the land of the free and home of the brave. Yes, America used to be the land of the free and home of the brave. But you need only look to the TSA to realize we are not free. Did you do anything wrong to get groped at the airport? What about run through the deadly scanners? No, you didn't, yet they're there. So not only can you be punished for doing nothing wrong, you are being punished for doing nothing wrong. So why must we win this fight now? Why can't we just go about our lives, work our nine to five jobs and not worry about politics? Why can't we sit back in our living rooms watching football, dance with stars and Jersey Shore? Oh, wow. I will answer those questions with another. Do you think our founding fathers would have let this go on? 
Do you think they would have gone back to farming or their daily lives while our Congress has a lower approval rating than the British King? We live in one of the most dangerous and crucial times in American history. We have the NSA, the CIA, and a whole alphabet soup of agencies watching our every move. Judge Napolitano said, you know how many times the NSA has spied on Americans? Gazillions. We have a Congress and a President that pay no attention to the Constitution if they've even read it. There are riot police preparing for beating protesters at the RNC later, and a 1,700-person jail was recently emptied for holding protesters. There are near tanks operated by this Tampa, Florida Sheriff's Department. They're tanks except for the main gun. We have Oath Keepers in our law enforcement, yes. And for all of those who are upholding their oath and are current serving law enforcement or military or veterans law enforcement or military, can you please stand up so we can recognize you? It is time to stand, to peacefully bring about a revolution. We have been doing that across the nation as supporters of the Ron Paul Revolution are elected to positions across America, and we need to continue that. But what happens if we fail? Even with the loss of many of our freedoms, we are still freer than tens of countries around the world. The liberty movements in those countries look to America as the bastion of freedom. If we fail to bring America back from the brink of tyranny, if our revolution disintegrates due to infighting or egos or endorsements, then it will not just be American tyranny, but world tyranny. Our fall would weaken or kill the morale of liberty movements around the world. Not only that, but with our 980 plus military bases around the world, the American military would not just be used to enforce American tyranny, but enforce global tyranny. We must win this battle for the hearts, the minds, and the souls of the American people. We will win this battle for America. We will restore the Constitution. And we will restore liberty. Yes, that. It's simple. First of all, start by informing yourselves on what the bill actually is. You need to be looked at as the experts on this because you are. You probably know more about the Constitution, every single one of you, than almost all the college school teachers across America. We'll have flyers and other information available at the speaker table there with our website on it. It has all the information we've gathered on the NDAA piled into one place. We couldn't print it all and bring it here, so please visit the website and take the time to go through those materials. After you understand what the NDAA is, do what got you here. Start informing people, have meetings, throw what is the NDAA signs on overpasses around the nation, confront your city councils, county commissions, and representatives on camera and upload them for the world to see. Finally, take action. Panda is one of the fastest growing grassroots groups fighting the NDAA in the nation. We can't help you. We have over 70 chapters in over 30 states across America and growing fast. We can help you get one started in your city. There's sign-ups on that back table there. Push your elected reps at the local, county, and state level to pass bills to nullify the NDAA. We link to resolutions by the Intolerable Acts Committee on our website. I highly encourage you to use those. Speak professionally and stay calm. I saw a video of a supporter of liberty and the Constitution against the NDAA confronting Representative Jim Langford. This representative played this guy like a fiddle, and the guy got angry. Well, there was people in the crowd about to defend him, 
in his stance against the NDAA, but he got angry and walked out. It's crucial to keep your calm. We're not radicals, and if we are radicals, we're radicals for the Constitution and radicals for liberty. Show this world what the revolution can do. Show the media we can make a difference. Show a corrupt Washington, D.C. we can make a difference. And most of all, show yourselves you can make a difference. I didn't get here overnight. It's taken lots of work, lots of connections, lots of help, and lots of long nights. There have been many defeats, but defeats are only building blocks to success. We will change the world. Finally, as the Founding Fathers said, I pledge my property, my fortune, my talents, and even my life for the cause of liberty. And I trust my Creator to protect me. I encourage you to do the same. Thank you.